And senators on both sides of the aisle are calling for a congressional investigation into the Ohio train derailment resulting in a massive fire and toxic chemical spill affecting residents and wildlife while Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg has been largely silent on that topic. This has been absolutely tragic for the people of East Palestine, Ohio. No one knows if the air is safe to breathe. No one knows if the water is safe to drink. For more on all this, let's welcome in commentary editor for The Washington Times and Newsmax contributor Kelly Sadler and Project 21 National Advisory Board member and radio host Christopher Arps. Uh, good morning to you both. Kelly, we'll start with you. What do the people of East Palestine have to do to get some attention and get some help from the federal government? <laughs> Well, you know, Rob, this is only 10 days after the fact. This was the story that happened on February 3rd. That's when the train derailed. Uh, a couple days later is when Norfolk Southern uh, had a controlled burn of all of the chemicals that were on board of this train. And these residents, and it was largely through social media that we discovered this story, looking at the clouds of smoke and the residents, all of their animals, the chickens dying, the fish dying, uh, the complaints of headaches, of nausea, of dizziness. Um, and it largely became a, a social media story. Then the mainstream media started reporting on it. And then and only then did the Biden administration respond. Um, Pete Buttigieg just tweeting this week on Monday for the first time ever acknowledging this train derailment. And these residents are up in arms. They don't know what to do. And none of their questions are being answered. There was a town hall last night uh, where Norfolk Southern, the, the railway, uh, didn't show up to answer the questions. There was no one there from the EPA, no one there from the federal administration. I mean, so these people don't know what to do. And I think this is a huge story that deserves our attention. And these poor residents, uh, they have no idea what the effects are gonna be, you know, 10 to 15 years down the line. Mm. Yeah, uh, Chris, their receipts for the transportation secretary, uh, no show, didn't go. Um, you know, we, we hear from residents that fish have died, animals have died. People are claiming that they have, um, they have sores on their face, their faces burning, what they feel heavy, they have respiratory issues. Uh, take a listen to what Ohio Governor Mike DeWine had to say. Why not get the federal government more involved in what no. is a significant site? No, that's not what I said. What, what I said yesterday is that I told the president that uh, the federal government was involved. Uh, we had used the, the Defense Department to, to model. Our National Guard was working directly with the Defense Department to model where, when the controlled uh, emission was going to take place, how far out that was going to do. What I said to the president is, if I need additional help, we'll tell you, but the people who have been in here from the federal government are doing a very good job. Chris, are the, is the federal government doing a really good job? Because listening and reading a lot of reports from residents, they're frustrated and they're scared. The, the federal government is doing a very poor job. You know, the governor of Ohio is taking the lead on this, which he should, but we haven't heard anything. We, well, it's been 10 days since we've heard anything. Uh, well, it took 10 days before we heard anything uh, from Secretary Buttigieg on this situation. Uh, par for the course for him and his boss and the Democrats. He looked to place the blame on President Trump uh, for possibly causing this derailment for a rule that uh, they waived uh, when he was president. So this is just par for the course. Pete Buttigieg was AWOL on the supply chain uh, issue. He was AWOL on the Southwest Airlines debacle, and he was AWOL when the FAA shut down airline flights uh, a few weeks ago. Pete Buttigieg is over his head, obviously, and needs to be replaced. Yeah, Congressman Bill Johnson, who represents that district, will be on Newsmax a little bit later this morning. He's been really muted about this whole thing, which has surprised me, Kelly. So a day ago, Mike DeWine said, you know, if I were in East Palestine, I would drink bottled water. Yesterday, he said, you know, they tested the water and the water's fine. My problem is, is I don't trust the government. Yeah. And I think a lot of this has to do with COVID-19. I think, you know, what the government put us through over the last three years, people just do not trust what the government's saying. Also, every time we see video, Kelly, of people out there testing the soil or testing the yeah. air or testing the water, they are wearing hazmat suits, okay? <laughs> but they want me to bathe my kids in the water and drink water out of the tap. I don't think so. Yeah, no, and, and they can't get any independent testing. That's what all these residents are saying. The testing that is being done is being conducted by Norfolk Southern, uh, the railroad company. And they have to sign waivers, basically saying that they won't press any lawsuits or they won't, you know, uh, go after the railroad company to get this testing done. And independent testing costs anywhere from 15000 to $50,000. And these residents want the EPA to come in um, and, and do the testing for them. Something needs to be done here. There needs to be more federal action. You know, this administration, the Biden administration is so concerned about climate change. 
they're constantly preaching to us about the devastation of our, you know, environment. Right. And yet when something like this happens, they are absolutely silent. They are silent with the Nord Stream 2 blow up uh, that, that emitted gas into our oceans. They're silent when whales are, are being beached on the East Coast in favor of, you know, uh, windmills. This is, this, these are, uh, these, these people are the forgotten men and women in America. And the Biden administration would do themselves some good if they took this and they acknowledged this problem head on. Yeah, a lot of Republican voters out there, by the way, wonder how much politics has to do with this. You ever seen the movie, The Civil Action? Came out 1998, John Travolta, about that tannery in Massachusetts. Oh, right, yeah. A lot of comparisons mm -hmm. being made to, to what's going on here with the water. And, and that movie, uh, this, this tannery was dumping chemicals into a, a local river in, in Massachusetts. And years later, all these people had cancer. True story. Uh, take a look at it. Um, okay, Nikki Haley yesterday formally announcing that she is running for president in 2024. Uh, and she took a shot at politicians that are past their primes. Take a look. We're ready ready to move past the stale ideas and faded names of the past. And we are more than ready for a new generation to lead us into the future. We won't win the fight for the 21st century if we keep trusting politicians from the 20th century. America is not past our prime. It's just that our politicians are past theirs. All right, so fine. Shot at Joe Biden, 80 years old, oldest president we've ever had, Chris. Um, but to me, the last time we heard that slogan, a new generation of leaders, it was Eisenhower, who was at that time the oldest president ever, who gave us John F. Kennedy, who at that time was the youngest president ever elected. Um, is she taking a, jo a shot there at Donald Trump as well? Yeah, I think she's definitely taking a shot at Donald Trump. He is the front runner. He, she's the he's the one that she's going to have to beat if she wants the nomination. Look, I think she's got a pretty good rationale case for running. She is a, a, a young person. She is a female. Um, she has executive experience as being former governor of South Carolina. She has foreign policy experience as being the U.N. ambassador under President Trump. Uh, but the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times uh, in their editorials yesterday says that she does not have a chance. But I think we should uh, give her a chance and see how this all shakes out. Yeah, Kelly, the media already attacking her. The latest in The View went after her the other day. But to Chris's point, she's young. She's a woman. She has experience. Do you think that she can appeal to women voters? Sure. Right. I mean, I'm not impressed with this. I, I don't I don't particularly I'm not going to be endorsing Nikki Haley. I think she's running for vice president. And I think she has a really good shot, depending on depending on who wins the nomination. She's getting in early and that can be both a good thing and a bad thing. This is going to be a long campaign. It can be a bruising campaign and it will show whether or not she can. You know, she's in it for the long haul and she can take the punches and throw the punches. She hasn't thrown any punches yet. She has, you know, her. She has pr national prominence thanks to Donald Trump um, naming her as U.N. ambassador. Uh, but she, she's got a record that she's going to have to prove. She's going to have to prove her case to the American public. Um, and it's to be seen whether she can do that or not. Yeah, we'll have more on that coming up. Kelly, Chris, thank you. We'll see you again top of the hour.